Hello and welcome back to Let's Play King's Blood with me, Bring It Down. I forgot to do a couple of things from the autosave. Might collect these rewards. But I did redo the level ups. I think I did them all the same as I did last episode. Just some poor squeak hearts. It is always the quest in a cellar. Not this time, though. You can find some rats at Wanderer's Death. You look scared, but don't worry. If you beat these beasts, the bards will cherish you as a true hero. You say so. Move speed and evasion. I don't think I want to give that to anybody. Do you have anything better? Okay, we'll send them on their way. I guess pick up the quest at Middlestead. Rats at the market. Hey you. Nice work on those rats at the local weaponsmith. Alas, there are more. Many more. Vicious and abnormally large. The situation is getting scary. Please help us once again and get rid of the rats at the local market. But be aware that some have been reported to be even bigger than the stray dogs. Are you interested? I suppose. Bring some fighters, a healer. That should do. All right, good enough. Keep them busy at the front, Serena, while I assault her back. Alright, so life against water. That guy's gonna leap to us. Park him back here. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, 68. Oh, 74 health is even better. All right, take the hat. And a uh, dragon breath. A bunch of rats. It's a pretty narrow battlefield. Luckily, I did bring a ton of ranged units. 
So we should be fine. More attack damage. Okay, yeah, we got a reward here. A rare item. Reaper's Bracers of Arcane Protection, Magic Resist, and Crit Rate. We can give those to Fenya. Arcanium here. Uh, before I forget, I'm going to give those to Fenya. Crit damage plus 16%, 14%. Okay, Silence of Evergreen Forest 4. A woman called Yasmir has given us this mission. She suspects that something is wrong with the roots of the Sacred Tree of Life. She said that you can find her waiting there. Are you ready to go? Alright, so this should be a full-blown dungeon. A rare healer, of course. I guess I'll bring the Assassin and our support characters. Well, let's keep her back and we'll bring another Assassin instead. More attack damage for that guy. Some crit damage. Or just more damage in general. I think I like that more. Honestly, the invulnerability potions are probably the best options for the uh, assassins. The enemies like to collapse on them once they jump into their backline. Alright, we have a story quest at Samson. Plundering bandits. We've always had bandits along our trade routes. Lately, however, the routes leading to the north of the kingdom have seen a surge in attacks. Something smells fishy. Everything seems so organized. We've discovered the location of one of their camps. Teach them a lesson. Try to find out more, will you? Whoops. Yeah, I meant to say yes. Yes, I will. Alright, two fighters, two shapeshifters, an archer, and a mage. Should be good enough. Uh, we have 20 attack damage here. Give that to her instead. A 20 ability power. An upgrade from that. Alright, looks good to me. Unlock a new city and unspent skill points. We give her more health. I make her in just a, to a pure tank, I think. Attack damage for Falkmar. Ori, attack speed, then ability power. And what city's next? I guess, uh... Orktar. 
Orktar is the name given to a loose collective of orc clans that dot the land around Blackleaf Forest, considered to be one of the most ungovernable places in all of Arthania. Even the mighty Wolf Clan cannot reign in the merciless warriors of Orktar. Some whisper that these orcs even have a secret alliance with the slave owning ogres of Otork. Orktar, with absolute delight, regularly sends raiding parties to terrorize the elven villages across Angisil and the free cities to their west. Officially, Arthania is at priest and united under one crown, but there is no denying that the orcs and the elves are very close to war due to the orcs' shameless violence. So I think this is one of those situations where less is more. I think instead of having all of this exposition about each city, they could have more like bullet points. So you can have a brief description, saying like Orktar is a name given, and maybe that's like first sentence here. And then have like another bullet where it's like, this is who's in charge of it. Another bullet saying what races live there. Because was it, um... Like Misselheim. It mentions humans, dwarves, and halflings living there. And then you could just say like, a bullet point with the population, and it tells you who all lives there. They could say who governs each region. So like, uh, Yishal has that one elven family that's in charge of it. Uh, the Sanctum of Hope probably has like a council of elders or something. I get they're trying to world build and tell a story, but I think this is a little much. Not going to worry about that right now. Let's go on our quests. Not a lot I can do about that. She's already targeting that guy. As is she. Can't get to the guy in the back. Right, we should be fine. Oh, maybe not. This guy's messing us up. I don't know if Orlish can do this by himself. Might be our first failed quest. I didn't notice that there was an assassin that was going to jump behind. If I had, I could have intercepted him with, um... Some tankier units. There you are. Ready? I feel something is corrupting the soul power surrounding the holy tree. You spot parallel steel rails embedded deep within the ground, and follow their path to the entrance of an abandoned mine. Beyond it, above a threshold of wooden beams, a dirt encrusted sign reads, No trespassing, intruders will be executed. But it's clear from the scattered broken tools around you that whoever posted that sign hasn't cared about this place in decades. At least, you hope that's the case. Let's knock out a fight first. In the wall you see a series of engravings. Three dwarves digging a tunnel into the rock. The next one shows the dwarves making their way into a hall filled with, large, with a large critter, and a large mouth and tongue surrounded by what looks like little maggots. The third and last engraving shows two of the dwarves dead, but only one of the dwarves escaping. As you look down, you see the remains of the last witness. Ooh. Flesh Rot Devourer. Okay. Any life folks? Yeah, right there. Can I target? No. Oh. We don't want him fighting that guy. A light beats Earth. And this guy here.
What does she do? Summons a golem. Okay. My healer doesn't go down, but I think he's going to. Yeah. Well, cool is she can have more than one golem out at a time. Unfortunately, I don't think we can finish this dungeon. <laughs> I don't know if a healing potion will bring back unconscious party members. In the center of a cavern is a rather detailed fountain sculpted from marble, depicting a thrashing fish exploding from a wide circular pool. At one time, water must have erupted like a geyser from the fish's mouth. But now, it barely makes its way out before running into a rivulet down into the fountain. Few lichens have formed on the fish's scales, so you're certain the water is pure. You notice that some of the fish scales are made of gold. Oh, it does bring him back. Awesome. I don't want to exit. I'd like to heal up some more. A uh, water trap. A few steps into the next cavern, and you hear the grind of stone slabs beginning to seal off every possible exit. Water begins to flood in from narrow channels and the cave walls, and it's rising. Fast. You spot a mechanism of levers and pulleys that you think you can manipulate to reverse the flooding if you have the right tools. Disarm that. You aptly disarm the aquatically adversarial trap, remaining adequately dry and no worse for wear. Shrine. You enter a chamber lined with the waxy stubs of dead candles. On the far wall is the framed visage of an old man's face burned into a sheet of arcanium. A few rusted lanterns hang from nails above the image. You imagine a time decades ago when someone kept these burning day and night to revere this man. Perhaps he was some folk hero, or the patriarch of a tribe lost to time. Maybe he was just the father of a family who loved him very much. Touch it. <laughs> For being a peasant, I'm getting mighty strong. My 30% attack damage until the end of the dungeon. Another shrine. You spy an Arcanium plinth bereft of any statue, a save for an empty pair of alabaster sandals. They're nothing special, but you notice they're exactly your size. Despite yourself, you climb the plinth and slide your feet into the sandals. You're transported into the memory of a black beach lit by the moon, your hands holding those of your children, and the ocean spray cooling your face as you lead hundreds of refugees through the night. Many of you have died escaping, but many more will live. With that thought, your mind returns to the cave. Another 30%. I'm assuming it's additive. We have an extra 60% attack damage. And a treasure. A... <laughs> attack Kravagus? A sarcophagus deep down the cave. What might be inside of it? Nothing good. Now what's light good against again? Earth. There are no earth guys, so... Awesome. That was a very important heal. I mean, I lost an assassin, but I feel like they don't usually do a whole lot anyway. This is what you get for being greedy. At least you survived the battle. 
Yeah, but will we survive the next one? Glowing eyes in the middle of the darkness staring at you. They seem to dance in quite a strange motion. Up to a level of the height of a human, and back down again to the ground. Slowly and with fluid motion. Still, you're too far away to make out a clear shape. But this phenomenon got you... Got your curiosity. Alright, let's do it. Watch out. These critters will assault our backline. Okay, so I guess we just defend our backline. I forgot we had an assassin. Hey how they scatter like that. Right, here's the hoping that one of these other nodes is a healing shrine. <laughs> hey, or sorry, a healing fountain. Carved into the wall is a fountain featuring three hairy creatures peeing into a basin. One has its hands in its mouth, the other one has its hands on its stomach, the third has its hands on its rear end. Ornamental gold circlets rest on each of the creatures' heads. You wonder at the meaning of it all, then shrug. Art has never really been your thing. Ah, oh, 40%. I think it's usually 30%, right? Storm trap. Oh, shucks. You enter a cavern with a high arch ceiling, and notice every hair in your body begin tingling and standing on the edge. A closer inspection of the cave floor reveals that it's coated in a translucent metallic sheen. The tension and smell of the air reminds you of impending thunderstorms. The charred thresholds at each exit makes you wary of attempting to leave. A strange rock covered in rotary dials and bolt-shaped sigils is nearby. Yeah, we have to activate it. You feel the full force of nature's thunderous might strike through your body as you narrowly avoid the full weight of a heart-stopping shock. Another shrine. Uh, same description as the one down here. An extra 15% attack damage until the end of the dungeon. I think we might have to go for the boss fight. I don't think that we can afford these other fights. I hate not getting S tier, but we're in dire straits. The more you progress, the more defiled are your surroundings. Roots, once the channels of life have rotted away and turned into a dark and gooey mass. The tunnels they opened uh, seem to lead to the source of all of this evil. Be aware, hard fight might await you. Yeah. I don't doubt it. We're out of resources. Devourer, queen? Let's kill this bug and end this infestation. Great. We got the golem out at least. Maybe he can take some hits for us. Well, maybe not. All right, that's a very important heal. Yeah, it's definitely the right call skipping those other fights. I really wish this healer was ranged. He keeps taking more damage than he, he should have to. Find a way to trap him into a corner. Okay, so Book of Quickness, Ability Power 34, Attack Speed 3. It's actually very good. I rip his Gloves of Protection. Armor, Critical Rate, Magic Resist, and Critical Damage. And Spear of the Vampire, Attack Damage, and Life Leech. Let's go with that. We did it! What a nasty beetle! Let's hope that this ended the suffering of our holy tree, and that all this madness ends now. Alright, we got Yasmir.
Alright, so she's an elf, a summoner, the first one we found. So all summons receive a bonus max health, damage, and ability power. She's Earth Survivor. A true survivor thrives within the forest. Swamps, though, are their least favorite playground. Mythical. Has a fascination for magic. And wealthy. Absolutely scared of any criminals. Some people have a strong bond to the arcane. Yasmir, even as a child, was able to manipulate the elemental flows, lift up stones and use them as a floating toy. Her talent was quickly discovered. She was brought and educated in Yishal's university. She was considered to be one of the best students as she was eager to learn, but despite all her talent, she stayed grounded and kept an open and friendly, sometimes though, seemingly naive personality. While she grew in size, so did her magical toys. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know that's <laughs> what that's uh, referencing. A living golem. Yasmir summons a golem with 95 hit points. Uh, with basic attacks dealing 6 physical damage with a smash special attack. Cool. Alright. So we're going to talk to someone down here. Let's going to do that. Surrounded by weaklings. You bring me your strongest fighter, and I'll show you true string. Yeah. Ha ha! We gotta fight. Strongest fighter. Uh, it's probably Thorbin. Orlish might be able to do it. These two have an advantage, but I'm assuming she's a melee fighter. Yeah, we'll send Thorbin in. Yeah, the invulnerability potion paired with the life leech on these two weapons, I think, is a good, uh, good idea. Hey, right, we got a rare item. Ability power 23, armor 8, attack damage 6, and max health 61. I think that'd be really good on Serena. I think I should prioritize some of these, um... Let's bring a stronger party and try and do this quest again. Orlish, Venya. Bring the mage because he's recommended. A couple of fighters and our healer. Do this instead. Right, so this block rate, initial shield, and attack damage, 18. Give that to her. I think this would also be good on her. She loses some attack damage, but she gets uh, ability power and other nice perks. Let's just give it to him instead. He needs some survivability. Uh, 27 versus 20 and... 27. 16, 12. Okay, looking pretty good here. Focus potion on him. Uh, AoE spells on our archer. I think a focus potion on our healer as well. Oh gosh. Take care of this stuff real quick. Uh, for him, where are we at? Yeah, we grab more health. Work our way up towards the ability power. Do two points for this guy. Attack speed and attack speed. Tosius. Attack damage. Six points for her. So she's a summoner. She needs ability power. 
Uh, she's also ranged, so I think we can forego some defenses. I'm gonna grab some. Grab more ability power. The so focus regeneration and ability power. Uh, for this guy, I'm gonna grab some armor. He needs. He's so squishy. He just he doesn't feel like he should be a frontliner. Uh, Holdor, health. Thorbin, some armor. That should help with his upcoming quest, I'm hoping. Alright. Grab the invulnerability potion. Trophy Hall 2. Uh, so increases the crit damage by 20%. Is that what I want to do? I think the forge is probably better. You can build a new building. Uh, dining hall increases our HP. Sanctuary is a place to rest and prepare for battle. Allows to bring one more combatant to battle. I think I like that a little more, actually. I also have the shrine. Shrine is a place of calmness and recreation. Increases ability power by 10%. Let's do the... Uh, Thanks, Wary. We'll do this fight real quick, and then Thorbin's fight shouldn't take place until next time, I think. Okay. So we have Fire there, who's going to be attacking her. We don't like that. Move her over there so that's not the case anymore. What are you? Earth. Oh, he's not in range, is he? That's okay. Yeah, that was so much easier. <laughs> Ability power and attack damage. I like that. Attack damage and crit rate. Uh, I'm going to go with the Book of Might. When in doubt, go for the less common item. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next time... But we'll see what quests we get. But we at least have a Thorbin's quest coming. So, either way, for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.